Hi everybody, I'm here a little bit early just checking to see if we are up and running. Welcome to the Gamel Facebook uh, site and uh, welcome to my home. I have now moved north in Texas. I'm up near Dallas in a town called Saxe and I'm doing a Gamel Facebook Live today on making masks uh, for your family. We all need, per and for the community, we all need personal protective gear and right now there's a severe shortage and um, I, I beg you to start doing this because you can help even just a few masks that you can make with your machines every little bit helps keeping your family safe covering yourself protects other people from you and giving them to other other places in the community you might be able to mail them to hospitals uh, to use as well. And so I really uh, am happy to be with you all. Um, we'll get started here in a little bit. We're a little bit early, but while we're waiting, I'll kind of show you around. Um, this, is, this is my studio. Um, it's not quite all put together. Normally I have a lot more thread. I'm wait, waiting for more hooks to come from Amazon. And um, so this is where that I do all my work here now. And so you can kind of see. And so sorry for the shoddy camera work. I am by myself that my husband is watching the dogs so that uh, they don't start barking during our setup. And so without, um, so we're, we're going to uh, make some masks today and when I get started we start right on time at three o'clock but when I get started we're gonna cover making masks with your Statler your Elevate and your hand guided machine and so that will hopefully help everybody in the Gamel community not only us but your friends as well and uh, so we are happy uh, every, every day here at Gamel. We are having two Facebook Lives, one at 10.30 in the morning and one at three in the afternoon. And uh, please join us. We, it's a way that we can connect with you. We miss you a lot. And so uh, we are, we are uh, so excited to somehow connect with you. I know that any of you that know me know that I love to be with people. So I'd rather be right in front of you, but I kind of feel your presence there. So I'm very happy to be doing this today with Gamel. So we're getting ready to get started here in a few minutes. I don't want anybody to miss it because we're supposed to really be starting at three o'clock. And so a um, lot of fun. Making masks with your Statler, you can make several at once and with your hand guided machine and your Elevate as well. And so I'm excited to be able to show you that today. So, thank you so much for all of you joining us. I see a lot of names popping on the screen, a lot of people, a lot of people joining and, um, and it's gonna be a lot of fun to, to do this. So, Anyway, um, we are just almost ready to start, just a couple of more minutes, and we'll get officially, officially started. So thank you so much for joining us today. I see so many familiar names and things, it's really fun. Yes, I, I see hi from uh, the UK, Alaska. This is so much fun to get together, isn't it? It just almost feels like we're, we're right there in the room together. So I really do appreciate you guys coming out. And, um, and Mr. Statler, he joined us. We, we're having a whole bunch of people join us today. So this is going to be a lot of fun. 
I've prepared a lot of different things to show you today and uh, and um, it's going to be so much fun to, to get, get going and, and showing you what I've done with this mask pattern. And just like everything that you do, it's interesting. I made them one mask pattern and instructions. And then I thought to myself, of course, when you go to bed at night, you think of other things, you know, I think I can make it easier. So I have made a second one, and I'm gonna show you in a little bit, too, how you can get to both. And I think they're both valid because some people will like one way and some people will like the other way. Um, some people have asked me uh, why. Uh, let me grab my little, little things here. So we're going to be creating a bunch of masks as we go. And we've got all our materials. Some people have asked me, why do I like to put the strings vertical on my mask? And I'll, while we're just getting ready for class to start, I will actually show you. When you put on your mask and you tighten down your strings, do you see this area here by the ear? I find that if I have a string across my nose and one here, I get a big gap at this area here. So I have chose to put my string down the sides and I feel like I get better closure here. So what I'm looking for is more safety. And, and so that's why I did mine in a little different shape. I'm a, a former nurse uh, and uh, we want all the protection that we can get. And so I've made masks that can be worn on either side and they can be washed in the washing machine. And they're three layers thick. And so a lot of people have started using these even when you go out, if you have to go out in public for any reason, I'm wearing my mask and I'm wearing a pair of gloves, even if I just have to drive through the drive through window of the pharmacy to pick up a prescription. So please, please help by taking, keeping yourself safe and we can get this virus under control. Um, I'm also very interested in this because I do have a son that works in a hospital. And so I'm hearing about all the cries for, for help of, uh, for personal protective gear. And so please, please consider making some of these for your own family and also for uh, making some for others if you can, because they can wash them. You can mail them and they can wash them. So now that we've explained that, it's uh, almost time here. We'll go ahead and, and get started on our presentation. And so we're gonna, I'm going to show you the easiest way. Uh, uh, I'm going to show you the easiest way to make these masks. And we're going to do it on three different ways, three different kinds of machines, and so that you all can do this. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is down here in my camera work. I'm going to turn my camera around. I start with just oh any fabric loaded on my machine for the back. Actually, it's going to become the middle of the mask. That is basically, if you think of the first fabric as your stabilizer, it's really what's loaded onto the machine. So we're going to start with just any fabric. It's not going to show in the mask. Nobody's going to see that fabric. So use the ugliest fabric you have. Uh, then you'll get some use out of it. Uh, and I like to use for the first layer 108 wide because I can keep making masks for a while. Now, the second layer that you're going to put down to make your mask, you're going to put this layer right side up. 
and this is a batik, so it is kind of hard to tell, but I'm going to put that layer right side up. And so right now, I have two layers down. So let's talk about uh, the Statler uh, first. Let's talk about what we can do, and then it will be really um, easy for you to see how hand guiders can also do this as well. And so I'm going to go back over here to my machine. And one of the things that I want to, to tell you is you can download this free pattern for the mask. And one of the ways that you can do this is by going to the little on your screen, on your patterns tab, the little piece of paper with the heart. Can you see that? And you can click on that and you can drop down to copy starter Statler patterns to account. If you do that, you will get these mass patterns. And so that's one way that you can get the mass patterns for the computerized users. Now, the hand guiders aren't going to need to, to have a pattern. I'm just gonna show you an easy way to make them and make use of your machine's abilities. Now, the other th thing that I did wanna show you is if you go to your pattern cloud, let me bring this up here so that you can see this. I'm sorry for the, so the video technics here. If you go to your pattern cloud account, there we go. Can everybody see my laptop here? There we go. Now we're at the laptop. Now if we go to our pattern cloud account and we open it, there we go. We'll click open pattern cloud account. Then what comes up is your pattern cloud. And we taught in our tour and classes how useful that this can be. Now, let's go, once you get there for a computerized users, go to your cloud, go to where it says my cloud. And then if you'll go to the stitcher, tab and click on it, you will be able to press the red button there and copy starter patterns to your account. So it's up to you. Either way that you want to do this is fine. Both ways work just fine and neither way is, is better or worse than the other. So now let's, let's get started. There we go, I'm gonna go over here to my Statler screen, and I have drawn a boundary around my quiltable area. I'm going to click on my project, and what I'm going to do is just drag the project into the boundary. If you need to size it just a little bit, you can. That's no problem. And then simply once you get that into your boundary, you simply quilt that. Now, remember, we are only quilting through two layers right now. The backing that serves as your stabilizer or middle, and the first layer of fabric that I put down, the blue batik, and I've got that right side up. So I will quilt that down. And here we go, let me move this over. And when I do, when I get to the blue pause down here at the end, then I will come to my machine and I will add a third layer of fabric. And this time I'm going to add my fabric right side down. Now these top two layers were floating and so it works out really good. But you have now stitched all the way to the pause on this pattern, and then you add the third layer of fabric. And th then you, of course, secure that down as well. 
And then what you end up getting is, let me turn this here so you can kind of see, you will get, hard to see the lines. On the blue side here, you have just horizontal lines and vertical lines. But on the white side, you've got all these little squares. This was the first pattern that I came up with. And once you get all these little squares, basically the squares are the guide for you to cut them out. There we go. Let me get this in front of you so you can see. We can take And we can cut these out. And I would cut a little bit outside the square. If you cut on the square, it's no problem, as long as you don't cut on these inner lines here. Do you see the one I'm pointing to with my scissors? The inner, upper, and lower line. So I am going to go ahead and cut one of these out. There we go. Well, I'm holding this. One moment, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my camera down for just a minute so I can do that. There we go. And I'm gonna trim around at the edge, and then I'm gonna show you what I've just done. There we go. So here I am. Let me turn this back around to me. I have just cut out one square. Now, even though I cut outside of these vertical lines, when I go to turn it inside out, look what happens. You still have open ends. And that's because when we made the squares with the vertical lines, to help, and those were to help you see where to cut the mass to form them, it only went through the, the white layer and the baby blue layer. So it gives you the ability to turn them and then iron them at this point. Now, the next step is to iron creases in your mask. And then we're going to make the, the side strings. And what we're going to do, I found it easier to just open up a big jelly roll. It's already two and a half inch strips. And I ironed it, folded, and at that point, what I did was I put a shoe, I stitched across a shoelace that was inside my jelly roll. And that shoelace is down inside there. And now you can turn it, just pull your shoelace, and it will become a nice strip that you can iron and use. So one jelly roll strip, give, I cut in half, and it gives you a strap for each side of your mask. And of course, we do have PDF instructions on GAML too uh, that, that you can get, uh, get to as well. Um, and you can watch the video over if you'd like as well. Now, after I made these masks, I thought, well, gee, how can I make this a little better? And I realized, you know, so many of us can do things and not have to, in, in mass quantities, and not have to cut out each one individually. So I made another pattern. So let me take you back over to the computer screen. And I'm just gonna open, I'm just going to delete this first one because I've already got the boundary of, of my quiltable area. 
and I'm going to drag over the next pattern. And it's so easy, it's just horizontal and vertical lines. And you just let your stitcher stitch through all three layers. So you're going to lay the layers the same, a base and then a layer right side up and then a layer right side down. And so now you'll stitch through all those and this is what you'll get when you do that. Let me get this out. I'm gonna show you the back of what happens because it's easier to see than on the blue fabric. There we go. So you can see that I just have horizontal and vertical lines. Well, how easy is this to just take a rotary cutter and cut all the way and separate two seams, another two seams, and then another two seams. And then you have these long strips of just two seams, a top and a lower. You can, at this point, turn them right side out and iron them into long tubes. And they're about uh, six inches high. And then take your rotary cutter and make them nine inches wide. And you can fold them and do several at a time. And I thought this is another way that you could mass produce masks much easier. And so take your rotary cutter and then cut strips of nine inch width. And you will end up with the same kind of piece that we got. And you will end up then at the same uh, area where you then get your mask and you would iron pleats in it and then put your straps on. So this, this got me thinking because I can make them faster that way. The first pattern I could do 30 masks at once and the second one it ended up being more like 45 because there wasn't as much wasted fabric either. And so I have put both patterns uh, are free on the GAMMA website and, and the instructions. And when you take a look at this pattern on the screen, let me take a look there, and talk for a minute about hand-guided users. All you have to do is start in the upper left corner with your fabric and put your channel lock on and go all the way 108 inches across your, your fabric. And then drop down six inches and put your channel lock on. If it ends up five and three quarters, nobody's gonna know or, or care. It's still gonna be a great mask. And then channel lock and go this way. Now you get to this side, put your channel lock on again and do another one. Each segment about six, six and a half inches high. Cut them apart, slice them up. You got it. So it's just a lot, a lot of fun. And uh, and yes, someone just mentioned you could do your ties on the gamble too. Yes, uh, you know the more you think about it, the more fun things we can do with our gamble. With this last one I did, I ended up thinking, how could I? There we go. How could I even make this better? And this last one that I made, I, before I sewed the straps on, I put a pipe cleaner across the top so that the nose would bend nice. And then I sewed it right in when I did the sides. And that really helped. But after doing that, I realized, I think I'm gonna have to use two or three pipe cleaners next time. And that will even make it better. And so as we go, we're all gonna find things that make it better and easier and share them. We're a family, get these, get these out, get them going. If you find something that makes it even easier, share that with everyone and, and we all learn together. 
And so it's going to be a lot of fun. And the pipe cleaners, uh, I still think you can wash them. Uh, if you're making them for a, a hospital, I would call uh, the hospital though and make sure that it's okay to have the pipe cleaners in there they might not work out in a sterilizing machine, I'm not positive, and so it's always best to check if you're gonna put something other than fabric. Um, another thing, somebody asked me last night, gee, maybe batiks would be better because they're so tight, tightly woven. It's very possible you might get better protection with batiks. Uh, I have no way of knowing, but it stands to reason that that could be uh, uh, a added benefit to use batiks in your fabric. And so uh, I want you all to be able to do this and um, I'll be answering questions and things on the Facebook site um, and looking at all your comments. And I just really appreciate you all being here and uh, we all learning new things together and uh, I'm enjoying watching these gamblers having these every day at 10.30 and 3 p.m. And it makes it kind of a fun way for us all to keep connected. Um, I miss you all. Um, I wish you were all here. I would give you all a hug, uh, except for right now we can't. So we got to keep our distance and we got to do this virtually. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for attending and I hope that this helped uh, and that, that you learned something. What, what did, uh, someone just asked me a question, what did I use for the, the middle layer? I um, actually just, the, the bottom I put a layer of white muslin and then uh, the next two layers were just quilting fabric. Uh, this next one that I'm making, though, I'm doing with batiks because I think it will be a little bit even better. And so, um, yeah, I think uh, it's going to be fun. We've got to make this fun. Use some, use some interesting fabrics. We want to think about making masks for kids. I almost made some Spider-Man ones today. Um, I'm probably going to do that tomorrow. And, uh, and uh, that, that is another good thing. And so um, one of the things somebody is just asking, can I show how to do this uh, without a Statler? If you have an Elevate, you can go get those starter patterns in Creative Studio and you can um, put, just put them in your, in your database there and you can draw a boundary and do pattern to boundary with your Elevate. And now with the hand guiding machines, all you have to do is use your channel lock and you'll go, I'm gonna show you briefly because somebody was asking that question. Let me turn the camera around. There we go. Okay, so what I would do is I would do my regulated stitching and I would go and put my channel lock on. I don't have a hand guided machine, so it's gonna be hard to tell, but you, once you put channel lock on, all you're gonna to have to do is pull that handle and it's gonna go. When you get to the other end, just take a ruler and drop down six inches or six and a half inches and then channel lock again and go to the left the whole way across. So, this, is, this will be easy for any, any of our types of gamble machines. There we go. There we go. Uh, so um, thank you so much for, for coming. And if anyone has any questions, I'll try to, I know I haven't seen all the comments coming on the screen as I was talking, um, but I will look at them and try to answer you on the Gamble Facebook site. And so I really enjoyed doing this and, and thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, it's been a, been a lot of fun. So enjoy, let me know how it goes with your mask. Please make some, protect yourselves to, most thing ever. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.